Can you still make out the date on this letter you read forever? Or is it blurred by the rain and the mud, by blood from an old wound? Did it come on that day at the start, the anxious good cheer of a good luck message kept for the train, a railwayman's jaunt, to give a good kick to the Kaiser and be home by Christmas, home certainly by spring? Did it come with the scarf, a welcome reminder of a fussing mother? Or was it a little bit later and a world away, that cool French evening behind the lines, still waiting for your first big show? Was it then that the letter arrived, with its hidden reminders of worries at home, of the lads on that other line, to Torquay, Totnes and Temple Meads, coaches of chocolate and cream on the Riviera Express. And you, hearing heavy artillery fire as you folded the sheet and glanced up to find yourself in another country. Maybe the letter came into your scarred and calloused hands an incalculable two years later, you still in one piece, but your mind scorched by death your mates all gone, or nearly all, and no chance, no question, of writing back with the truth of your life. Or perhaps on the eve of your return to England, at the Great War's end, you were simply reminding yourself of the home you were going to see again, rehearsing these blotted and long-ago lines with a hint of a smile. You are about to see Reading, and Stroud in its valley, and Gloucester docks. You will never see them again, as you did before. We know, of course, that you never made it to Paddington. That is why you are here. You are reading forever as the bronze representative of yourself and all your dead fellow workers, dead soldiers, standing just above our level and cloaked in that double loyalty, we stop and look up at you.